Hello Art12 and welcome to your colored pencil technique demonstration. What you will need for this is your colored pencils, the little half sheet of white paper, pencil, your sharpener, a ruler, and that chunk of newspaper like the whole thing um, for newspaper padding. So we'll set that off to, a, to the side for a minute. Um, as far as paper goes, there's the bigger 9 by 12 paper that is obviously smaller than the half size. So the half sheet of drawing paper is what you want to use. All right, so we're going to start out with learning four techniques, but one of the techniques you need three rectangles for. So I'm going to just trace my ruler. I'm going to use Sharpie so you guys can see it really well. Uh, you can use pencil. It'll work just fine. So I'm going to outline my ruler into maybe two inch um, lines. And they don't have to be perfect. We just want like a section. So for the first one, this one's going to be called fade light to dark. Or sorry, fade dark to light, I apologize. Okay, then we want a little bit of space. The next one, we're going to do about four inches long. And we're going to divide that into three. So divide it into thirds, roughly equal. And this technique is tint, tone, and shade where we're going to create some different values of a color so that you can have more variety within your final draft all right now the next one is layering two colors so we're going to go back to the size that we did at the top about two inches So again, my rectangles aren't perfect. This is a practice, totally fine. Layer two colors. Okay, one more. And we want a little space at the bottom because you are actually at the end of this going to decide what color scheme you want to do for your final. Okay, the last technique is called fade one color into another. All right, so we have little like two inch rectangles for our final draft. Now, you're gonna take the newspaper padding and put it underneath your paper it helps for our techniques to be very smooth and it helps with the layering process with colored pencil but also shading pencil so we're going to start getting into the habit um, for shading okay so fade light to dark uh, obviously pick any color but black and white because we're working with colors and your color schemes so i'm going to carefully get out all my pencils have those ready all right so any color you wish I'm gonna go with red you can copy me if you want totally fine um, <clears throat> the object is to have it darker on this side fading into the white paper and having white paper show here so there's a couple different ways to get your um, application to look smooth so newspaper padding helps also a circular motion with thin layers, so I'm trying or a light pressure. I'm trying not to press very hard. And then once you kind of get the hang of it, if you want to hold your pencil differently, so I'm holding it horizontally, so then I can use the whole side of the colored pencil and not just the tip of it. So for some of you, this may be a much quicker way that you can get a smooth application. 
and you're still trying to stay within the lines because craftsmanship always counts, even on a practice. This is like your rough draft for the final draft. So I feel like this way of holding it horizontally works really well when you have to fade it out into the white paper. So the white paper is where your lightest values are going to come from. And we want a full range of value in each little shape or section of the final draft. Okay, so now I'm going to apply another layer. So the more you layer it, the darker the color will get in value, but also the more vibrant or saturated the color will be so that you're also getting range of value within your color. You're altering your color slightly based on how many layers. I'm kind of filling in the gaps so it looks a little bit smooth. Using a circular motion. So circular motion is the best way to get a smooth value, the overlapping. All right, then I'm gonna do one more thin layer. So with these colored pencils, um, admittedly, they are not the best, but you can get about three to four layers with them if you work with thin light pressure. Okay, so it's slightly darker fading into the paper. All right, so there's that one. Next is tint, tone, and shade. So the first thing is to pick what color you want to use. So I'm going to go with orange. So don't pick white, black. Uh, you could do yellow or pink, that's fine. So I'm gonna just scribble off to the side what the actual color is. So we can kind of see the difference. So scribble off to the side. A tint is where you're gonna start with a thin layer of the color you've selected. So I'm using orange. So circular motion. And I'm gonna fade out into the paper, into this little section. And I want to make sure there's not a line where the value starts and stops. Like it's not like suddenly super vibrant and then just ends. We want to fade it into the paper always. Always. So I'm also going in multiple directions. So I'm applying in one direction, applying a thin layer in another direction. So that kind of fills in the little gaps. Okay, so then I'm going to apply the white on top. So I'm gonna to add a layer of white on top. I'm gonna to start out with a thin layer. And if you want it to be really, really light, you could add white first, but it's really difficult to see if it's smooth before you add a color on top. So I recommend just doing the white on top. And the harder you press, the slightly lighter it will be. So circular motion, circular motion. Okay, so we have a slightly lighter tint. All right, then for a tone, so we're adjusting the value, and also like a tone neutralizes the color so it doesn't look so bright. You're gonna, I'm gonna stick with my selected color. And then I'm going to need the colors complement. So from our color theory book, I'm going to the complementary color page, and it says that blue is orange's complement. So therefore, I'm going to get blue ready as well. You can use light blue, dark blue. It'll definitely be darker with dark blue, obviously. OK, so I have those two ready. Uh, then in, on the techniques, in your Google Doc, it has um, like the process of layering in case you forget. You'll be able to refer back to this. So you're going to start with a thin layer of the selected color. And so we're always fading into the paper as well. And the first layer is the most important layer to get smooth because um, colored pencils are really waxy. And so once you start building up the waxy layers, if there's the first layer that's really liney and doesn't look good, has bad craftsmanship, 
your other layers on top aren't going to cover that. So the first layer is the most important layer. So color pencils are made out of um, powder pigment usually, and then they combine it with like an adhesive, and then they press it into a pigment stick, and then they encase it in wood. So these are not really expensive color pencils because we had to buy a set for everybody, but they do make color pencils that are like two, three dollars per pencil. And those have higher quality pigments so and less wax. So the cheaper it is, the more waxy the pencil and the more expensive, the less wax that's used, more pigment. But I mean, honestly, you could do this with Crayola. You just have to get the layering down. Okay, so then I'm gonna do a thin layer of the colors complement. So blue is orange's complement. And if I press really hard, I'm probably going to get like a greenish brown because when you mix complements together, you get brown. So that's what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to just change the tone of the orange. So I'm doing a really thin and I'm doing like circular motion, like super fast, but thin application. And I'm going to go the opposite direction so it looks a little more smooth. Okay. Then I'm going to put, so if you like that, you can keep that. But I'm going to put orange on top because I still want it to be rather orangey. Still fading out. So notice the right-hand side is lighter. And so three layers is about three to four thin layers is what you can get with these pencils. You want to keep your layers really thin. All right, so then for a shade, usually a shade you would either add like a darker blue or more blue, or we're going to use black because with the cooler colors like blues, purples, even like the red, um, it's kind of nice to have like some darker tones. Okay, so for shade, you're going to start with a thin layer of the selected color first. So same thing again. Remember the first layer is the most important layer to get smooth. So circular motion. You can try to use the side of your pencil. And I'm fading out into the paper. So every technique pretty much starts like the first one. And we just build upon it from there. Okay, so as you're doing this, kind of think of how hard it is to get um, smooth value, because it's part of your grade, it's part of your craftsmanship grade. And then when you're doing your final draft tomorrow, Think of how big your sections are and do you need to make them smaller so that you can get good craftsmanship with the or with the color pencil techniques. So if this is difficult, if this was too big, then you know like a one inch by two inch area might be the limit of size as far as shapes go. So when I'm doing this, like the motion mostly comes from your shoulder. So I'm kind of like my wrist isn't touching, it's like hovering above so I can get a lot of movement in my hand. And like in order to elevate your wrist slightly, your shoulder has to work. So this does probably feel a little bit awkward. I'm gonna turn this so my arm is comfortable. Um, so turn your paper so your arm is comfortable to get smooth value. Uh, after a while, it will not feel uncomfortable because you're training your right brain for muscle memory. So that is the same part of the brain that's responsible for like athletes, dancers, musicians. Um, if you're good at typing on the computer, like that's all muscle memory. It's all a right brain activity. Okay, so I'm gonna come back with the orange on top. 
So I did a super thin layer of black and you can build it up. So if you wanted it to be even darker, you can. I just wanted to be able to see like a slight difference between using a complementary color and using black, especially when you get into using like yellow. And then for pink, if you're using pink, I should have said this before, I apologize. Pink's complement is green because red's complement is green and that's pretty much how you make pink using red. All right, so slightly darker. So then you have different values of the color. Okay, next one is layering two colors. So you're pretty much creating your own colors. In the technique um, explanation in your Google Doc, it does say that analogous colors work best. So we're going to give ourselves a reminder. That analogous colors work really well for layering. And so in your color theory book, we have an analogous color page next to the complementary. Remember analogous colors are like three-ish that sit next to each other on the color wheel and we use them to blend and layer. So when you use analogous colors, you're not gonna get a strange color. It's still gonna be a nice color. So I'm going to select two colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And I'm gonna go with um, a darker green and a lighter blue to kind of see what I can make. All right, um, so two colors that are next to each other. Um, if you're using pink, you can go with, um, you can actually do a couple with pink. You can do purple with pink, red with pink, orange with pink, or yellow with pink, uh, because it has, you know, similar colors in all of those. Okay, so I'm going to start out exactly how I did for the first one, but whatever color you want it to be more of. So if I want a bluish green, so blue is first, I'm going to put that one on my layers last. If I want it to be greenish blue, well then I will put green last. So I want mine to be bluish green. So I'm gonna start out with green. Remember your first, first layer is the most important to get it to be smooth. Circular motion. And then I'm gonna hold it more horizontally. And I'm also like holding it somewhat in the middle so that I can't press very hard. If I hold it way up here, then I can press really hard. So holding your pencil in the middle, just like when you're drawing, will help with light lines, light pressure. And I know it feels weird right now, but your muscle memory will develop. And by the time we're shading next semester, it will feel natural to you. All right, I'm going to go a little bit darker with this one or more vibrant, more intense, more vivid, saturated on the left hand side. Okay, so then I want mine to be bluish green. So I have my blue in my last layer. I'm going to turn it so my arm is comfortable. So this is how you can create your own colors. So pretty much this is how you're creating the tertiary colors of like reddish orange, yellowish green, red violet, blue green, etc. So notice how I'm fading into the paper always. So therefore that section I have darker value and lighter value. All right, so for the next one, we're going to fade from one color into another. And since we're having to overlap and blend a little bit, again, analogous colors work the best. If you're not gonna use analogous colors, I, you do have another piece of this paper. You have a couple of them. So you could use that as like another practice um, to try out like your layering if you're not going to use analogous colors and make sure you don't get like a weird color you don't want. All right, so I'm going to use pink and purple, I believe. So again, everything starts out like this first technique of fading from dark to light. 
And I'm going to start with my darker color first. So if you have a dark and light color, I usually go the darker one. It's a little bit easier to see if it's smooth or not. And so the only difference between this one and how we started the others is that you need to fade out sooner. So by the time I reach the middle, I need to be already faded out or the center. Okay, so I feel like that does not look very smooth. So I'm gonna move the paper so my arm is comfortable and I'm gonna fill in the little gaps, uh, do some smaller circular motion. And I wanna get rid of any lines where one value starts and the other one stops. So if you kinda look at it from far away a little bit, that might help you kinda see, does it look liney? Should I fade it a little bit more? So if it does look liney, this is where the multiple directions come in. So then maybe I'm gonna go this direction as well. And so the multiple directions of circular motion will help make it look smoother, less liney, and will get you a better grade in craftsmanship. So the smoothness is craftsmanship. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my analogous color of pink which is kind of hard for you guys to see, I apologize. Circular motion. And I am pressing a little bit heavier on the one side where it's gonna be darker fading in. So, I'm gonna start fading out and overlapping into the purple. Okay, then I'm gonna switch directions of my paper so I can also also switch directions of the application of the colored pencil so again if you're using pink you can use red you can fade into orange it blends well with yellow um, I'm fading it into violet you could probably work it into blue as well I feel like pink is not quite a neutral, but it's kind of like, you know, in the middle of the color wheel and it works well with warm and cool colors. Okay, so I'm going to look at it from far away. And if I need to, then I'm going to kind of do a little bit more overlap in the center. So there's not a line where it one color starts and the other one stops. So I'm going to go back with my purple a little bit do some overlapping so this one you're not going to have the paper showing through but if you choose a light and dark um, color then you have range of value okay so you have a decision to make you need to look through your color theory book and decide what color scheme would I like to use on my final draft so do I want to use primary colors do I want to use secondary colors do I want to pick three of the tertiary colors do I want to pick warm colors? Do I want to pick cool colors? So I'd say these two you probably have the most variety in. Um, or do I want to neutralize all my color and use brown and probably a lot of undertones of black, etc. But not straight black because in art it's not really a color. Do I want to use a set of analogous colors? So remember you're going to choose three that are next to each other on the color wheel. So I could choose yellow, green, yellow, and yellow, orange if I wanted to. Do you want to pick one pair of complementary colors? So I would pick blue and orange or red and green or yellow and violet, or you can pick a tertiary set. So maybe I want to do blue, green, and red, orange. Monochromatic, uh, you can choose that for this assignment. You'll be doing a lot of the tint, tone, and shade. Um, I would either pick green or blue because there's two light and dark versions of that pencil but you could do monochromatic and then split complementary um, is another option so you find the color that you really really want to use find its complement and split on either side 
So I'm actually gonna do a split complementary color scheme. So at the bottom of my paper, this is what I'm going to write. And then you'll type it later, but color scheme, I'm going to do split complementary. And I'm going to do for this one, blue green for sure. So I'm gonna list my colors below. Blue green. Okay, so blue green's complement is red orange, but I'm gonna split on either side. So I'm gonna go with red and orange. So then I can tell what your color scheme is going to be, what's the name of it, and what colors go in it to verify that, yes, that is a color scheme and you're going to stick to it on the final draft because that is part of your grade. Okay, so right now you're going to take a picture of your practice and you're going to insert it into your Google Doc. So this is what is due today.